So when it comes to being an all-around entertainer, black men surely do it the best. But let's talk about why some of their careers won't elevate unless they decide to put on a dress. Let's discuss. Testing, one, two, three. Let's talk about suppressing black masculinity. What's up, y'all? It's your boy Beasley here. I hope you are staying cool, calm, and collected out there. So sorry for the delay. Life just got in the way, but I am definitely here to stay. And the topic that I want to talk about today is the fine, incomparable Jonathan Majors and his Ebony Magazine photo shoot. So let's go ahead and get it to it, shall we? Jonathan Majors, I'm disappointed in you. I'm not canceling you, my brother. But don't you ever get on another magazine with no pink jacket and no damn leggings. They got you looking like you naked. Don't do that, brother. Don't let them effeminize you. You are an alpha male, Jonathan Majors. You are on the cover of Ebony magazine. They got you looking very effeminate in that woman's outfit, those stiletto boots. Don't do that no more, brother. So if you guys don't know who Jonathan Majors is because you live under a rock or don't care about black actors or the black community, Jonathan Majors is an actor who is currently on the rise, in my opinion, to fill the shoes of Denzel Washington. You know, it's unfair to compare these newer actors and newer entertainers to the older ones, but you know, Hollywood tries to find anybody to replace somebody, try to, to replace the star because they're not really that big of a star anymore. So they have to find somebody to fill the shoes. And I feel like they're trying to get Jonathan the majors to fill those a-list like black actor hollywood shoes the shoes of denzel washington jonathan is a 33 year old actor most known for his roles in lovecraft country which he actually won an emmy for and also the ant-man which is in the marvel universe and most recently he is known for being the villain in creed 3. now i'm not going to step into spoiler territory but he was just absolutely great in that movie like y'all I saw that movie this past weekend and I just absolutely loved it I didn't even watch the first two movies but Creed 3 was definitely a sight to see and in order to kick off the promo tour for Creed 3 he did a photo shoot with Ebony Ebony magazine and it was mainly also geared towards like Valentine's Day it was Valentine's themed a bunch of like pink and red and flowery floral things now you guys when I first saw this photo shoot I loved it I loved it. I loved it. I have never, I've never been this like captivated by a photo shoot in a very long time. Like everything down to the styling, the poses, the way he was just so masculine, but yet feminine, embracing both the masculine and the feminine energy. It related to me. It related to me because, you know, I view myself as somebody that's kind of more like, alpha male presenting but also like embraces his feminine side like you know if you guys know me i mean as you can see i love the color pink i wear pink almost every single day like <laughs> almost every piece of my wardrobe has some pink in it hell even this apartment has became a little pink uh -huh. exhibit a but i just loved how he was styled and how he looked in this photo shoot like he just looked just absolutely just dope. And on top of him being fine, like he's comfortable with his sexuality because we all know this man is straight. We know this man is straight, but baby, he doesn't care how he's viewed. Like he's just embracing the masculine and the feminine energy all in one photo shoot, tens across the board. But baby, the girls are mad. Well, the men are mad, but the men that, in my opinion, act like girls are mad. Like the men were mad mainly for the fact of toxic masculinity. And also with the fact that, you know, I kind of agree that Hollywood does have a trend of making masculine black men appear more feminine. Now, when this photo shoot was released, it was met with mixed reviews because, you know, when it comes to, you know, like the media and the black community, they're always going to try to find a way to divide us in some form of fashion. You know, there were people like me that were in favor of it because it was just a beautiful, very original looking photo shoot for a man that looks like Jonathan Majors. But a lot of people were against it, you know, mainly men and women, but mostly men because of the fact that it made him look feminine. And it's like, damn, 
time. Once again, we have a black man that is being elevated in society, but they always got to find a way to suppress the masculinity, the masculine side of things when it comes to these men in Hollywood. But this photo shoot left a lot of people divided and the backlash was so intense to a point where he did a sit down interview and I'm just going to abbreviate it in layman terms. He basically said like, yeah, I do look a little like less masculine, but at the same time, you ain't going to step to me. <laughs> you ain't going to beat my ass. And he also brought up the simple fact that in 2023, black men need to stop being put in a box. You know, it's that cliche tale of us, you know, always having to grow up and be hyper masculine. You know, the world's going to beat you down. So you got to be strong, hard. You can't show any weaknesses. You can't be feminine. You can't. Like, you basically got to be a man, like a man's man. Like, as a black man, you always got to be just just hard, rough, and tough. I respect the fact that he is just absolutely against that. And in that photo shoot wanted to dispel that, dispel that cliche that black men can't embrace their feminine side. Like, why can't black men embrace, like, their feminine energy naturally and still be straight? And I completely agree with that aspect because, you know, I like to perceive myself as a masculine man. I mean, granted, I'm a masculine man that, you know, <laughs> bends over backwards. But I will say that I, like, in my day-to-day, -day, like, I'm just a man. Like, I'm just me that happens to like feminine things and embraces femininity. On that aspect, I relate to Jonathan Majors 100%. However, you know, one talent that I possess, I say this all the time, that I can see both sides of the same coin, both sides of the argument. And I will say that for a very long time, when black actors were able to, you know, step into Hollywood spaces, most notably black men have always had to downplay, you know, their authentic self and their masculinity in order for them to fit in or for them to get mainstream attention. In my opinion, I think the deeper issue with Hollywood trying to make black men more feminine is to basically suppress them because if black men get like a little bit close to power and really like engulf that power, they can really like get in the game and run things. And in order to keep black men from running things, they suppress them and kind of like dangle like a little piece of power over their head. Like for example, like we'll give you this if you suppress your masculinity and put on a dress. And then therefore getting them to wear dresses puts them in a place where, you know, they need to do this in order to get over. They need to do this in order for them to pay their bills, in order for them to become successful. It's like they need to downplay themselves in order for them to be elevated. And this situation always takes me back to Dave Chappelle leaving his own show, The Chappelle Show, back in 2005. Like, I will never forget. Now, Dave Chappelle is one of my favorite comedians of all time. Of all time, I think he is one of the best to ever do it. But, you know, back in the day as a kid, <laughs> yeah, I was a kid watching The Chappelle Show. I was disappointed that he left his show back in like early 2005. Like he had a whole nother season to do and he just completely walked away. And it was a $50 million contract, you guys. He walked away from $50 million back in the day and everybody called him just a stupid idiot, a coon and a buffoon. They just thought Dave Chappelle was dumb. But I had to kind of check myself back then because I was like, you know what? I think there's a good reason he left. And the main reason he left was because Basically, they wanted him to be a coon. They wanted him to be a coon and a buffoon. They wanted him to put on a dress to suppress himself. And they wanted him to wear a dress mainly so he can just get out on the stage and dance. They wanted Dave Chappelle to go out there and wear a dress as a test to see if he was the next one to be elevated in Hollywood. That's what they wanted to do because anytime you see a black male actor, you know, get to the top of the food chain of Hollywood, it's nine times out of ten because they decided to put on a dress. I'm a conspiracy theorist to a degree. Like when I, I connect dots that maybe shouldn't be connected, I don't know. But certain dots, like when I see that they put every black man in the movies in a dress at some point in their career, I'll be connecting them down. Like, why all these brothers gotta wear a dress? That's happened to me. I'm doing a movie with Martin. Yeah. The movie's going good. So I walk in a trailer. I'm like, man, this must be the wrong trailer because. There's a dress in here. <laughs> they come in. It's the writer comes in. I think he's the writer. He's like, Dave, listen, we got this hilarious scene where Martin's sneaking out of jail. So he disguises you as a prostitute. <laughs> and he put this dress on. And it, huh? What? Well, prostitute? No, nah, I'm not doing that. I don't feel comfortable with that. 
that that should have been in a discussion. What? You don't feel comfortable with it. I mean, it's a hilarious bit. All the greats have done it. So, well, if all the greats have done it, it's kind of hacky, right? You're right. So why don't we just not do it? Because I don't feel comfortable wearing a dress. Oh, come on, Dave. Listen, we, we got it all set up. We're supposed to shoot. Every, every minute you waste costs this much money. You know, the pressure comes in. Huh. He said, I'm, now I'm not wearing no dress, man. I'm funnier than a dress. Just give me something funny to say. I don't need to wear no dress to be funny. What am I, Milton Berle? Ba, 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 ba. You know, we're going like this. And then finally he's like, ah, and he, he leaves. And then like the director comes, Dave, it really would be great if you wear the dress. What is wrong? What is this, a uh, broke back mountain in here? So, <laughs> so then, <laughs> like, wear, the, wear the dress. I don't want to wear the dress. I want to wear this dress. You know what I mean? This is, uh, oh, gosh, this guy's so difficult. They leave. Now the producers comes. Come on, David, would be so great. I mean, and then I started thinking about it. all the comics that I've seen. Man, you know, strong brothers. Why, why are they putting us in these dresses? But the minute it was clear, I was adamant. I'm not wearing a dress. I'm not wearing the dress. All right, fine. Think of something else. Guy comes back ten minutes later. The whole new scene. How, damn! How did you write the scene so fast? For example, successful actors like Eddie Murphy, Wesley Snipes, the Wayne's Brothers, and also Tyler Perry all had to wear dresses in order for them to be elevated in Hollywood. And they're all immensely successful. Now granted, they got there with their own talents and merit, but I feel like you, I feel like as a black actor, you get in the room, you know, you showcase your talent, you're talented, you get all your accolades and all that. But in order to get to that next level, you basically got a coon. You got a coon, be a buffoon, put on a dress, bam, you passed the test. Now you're a millionaire, multimillionaire, even a billionaire in Eddie Murphy's case. Like, I, I don't know what it is, but it just seems like that's always the glass ceiling with black actors in Hollywood. Like, you're gonna get this high bits off your talent, but in order to get past it, you gotta put on a dress and just dance, 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 check and jive. And the sad thing is, you guys, I actually sympathize with a lot of these black actors who have to put on a dress and make a fool out of themselves because they work in an industry where you don't know where your next paycheck is going to come from and you don't know if your project is going to pop. So you're going to do any and everything to get to the top, you know. I'm not really in tune with what goes on behind the scenes, but I, I just, I see what I see. And I see that like a lot of these actors did not get to that next level until they put on a dress. And it's not even really just only affecting like black male actors as well. Black male social media influencers mainly built their following off the back of mocking black women by wearing wigs and putting on dresses. Like for example, Blame It On Quay. Blame It On Quay, he's a cool dude. Um, you know, the crazy thing is, you know, I always talk about six degrees of separations. Um, we used to work in the mall together. Like he would come into Nordstrom all the time to like pick out sunglasses and hats and all that because that was his style. You know, when he dresses as a straight man, he always wears like a bucket hat and some glasses. But he built his whole entire fame and popularity off of mocking black women and mocking every negative aspect of black women while wearing wigs, dresses, weaves, eyelashes, you name it. A lot of black male social media influencers still dress up and mock black women to this day because it still gives them a lot of likes, clicks, views, and pay. I will say though, you guys, a lot of it is just not funny to me. Like, I, I just gotta keep it real. Like, a lot of these like black male social media influencers blow up by mocking black women. But to me, it's just not funny. Like, a lot of people find it funny because, you know, I think it's a lot of white people that find it funny. But to me, I'm just like, it's just another form of coon comedy. Coon comedy, that, that's what it is, coon comedy. Like, a lot of people like seeing black men be coons like dressing up as a woman and shucking and jiving yeah some of these actors made it funny but like on the social media side of things it's just another form of cooning like that's what it is and white people love a good coon i think that's the main reason why this trend will never end because white people like seeing black men basically like not degrade themselves but like digress themselves they like seeing black men in a more feminine light because it makes them feel more masculine like i i gotta keep it real with you guys like white men are not as masculine as black men like i, I just got it that, that's just what it is white masculinity is threatened by black masculinity and white masculinity is what runs america so therefore they're going to suppress 
anything that threats on their territory. So I may be wandering around in circles, but that, that's just how I feel, you guys. Like, I really feel like that dress is so much more than just a dress. Like black men putting on a dress makes white men feel their best. And the white women love it because, you know, they're not being mocked, but they're mocking black women. And white women are threatened by black women. So that that's just what it is. It's just like a revolving door of people being threatened on their territory. So they're just like, hmm, what can we do to make these people appear more, you know, you know, appealing, you know, for the modern audience and more like funny to us, to a wide audience. Ooh, let's put them in a dress. Yeah, y'all, if you know me, I always go just far left, just far left on a tangent. But I will say at the end of the day, when it comes back to Jonathan Major's photo shoot, it was something that needed to be seen. It was something that black men needed to see because they need to see that you can be as masculine as you want but you can also embrace a softer more gentler side and still be a masculine straight alpha male it's called duality like we all can't just be one note we have to express different aspects of our personality and every black man has a dose of femininity within their personality the photo shoot was beautiful and pink and it definitely made society think and it made a lot of black men at least black men that are open think outside the box so you guys I gotta say I loved it I loved the photo shoot but I also understand a lot of people strife and pain because they try to play on black men and their pain by suppressing them so they can get likes clicks views and fame but yeah y'all let me know what you guys think about Jonathan Major's photo shoot and let me know what you guys think about you know the argument that in Hollywood they always try to make a black man appear less masculine than they already are. But those are my views. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm going to come back at you guys with some more content.